In today's video, we're going over my favorite hip flexor strengthening exercises. Lift, lift, lift. Great work. All right. So knowing how to introduce and advance strengthening exercises for the hip flexors can be very, very important. There's a lot of pathologies that need more hip flexor strength. The big ones that come to mind are going to be femoral acetabular impingement syndrome, hip flexor tendinopathies and strains, folks that have hip osteoarthritis, as well as folks with hip dysplasia. So we need to know how to meet the patient in terms of tissue irritability. If I have a patient that's very, very painful in the front of the hip, I can't give them really hard exercises. But if I have a patient that has no pain, they're just really weak, I need to know how to strengthen that. If I have a post-op patient, so let's say hip dysplasia, anterior hip replacement or FAI surgery, I also have to offload the area for a period of time and then very slowly ramp up. If I don't have a good understanding of where to begin and how to advance, we can hurt these patients. So in today's video, we're gonna go over my favorite hip flexor exercises, how to introduce them and how to advance them over the course of time. What's up guys, this is Dan from Fitness Pain Free. I am a physical therapist and a coach. We've helped to coach thousands of incredible coaches and clinicians with their online courses, programs, and mentoring services. The goal of today's video, make you 1% better. So one of my go-to exercises from the get-go when I'm trying to strengthen someone that has hip flexor issues is a dead bug variation. So usually I begin by getting a good core brace in the dead bug. So essentially I want you to brace your core like someone's gonna punch in the belly. And I can just take my fingers and I can go from the sides and I can feel, and essentially I don't wanna be able to get my fingers into his abdomen because he's contracting nice and hard, right? If we wanna to try to get a better contraction of the abdomen, we can use a band or use cables to give him a little bit of resistance. So when he presses down, that assists him in bracing his core. So go ahead and brace for me. Don't let me get my fingers in. Awesome, you're doing a great job. Let's let go of this for now. Step two is gonna be adding a march. So essentially you want the knees bent up a decent amount. If you have them straighter, it increases the moment arm and makes it harder for the hip flexors. So we start with the knees bent quite a bit. Go ahead and brace for me. And go ahead and just pick up one leg. Yep, and place it right back down again. We'll march, we'll get to the other side. Right, basic and easy. Once your athlete has mastered this, and this is not a problem, let's bring both legs up. Good, and then just tap your heel straight down. Don't extend yet, yep, and then the other side. Very good. If this is starting to get really easy, we can just reach out a little bit further with the heels. Go ahead and show me one of those a little further. Yep, yep, and reach out until you're completely straight at the end. Good job, back and forth. Yep, and if your athlete's doing great with these, we can just straighten out the legs completely. And what this does is it extends the lever arm or moment arm, and now this is just more challenging for the hips. Let's do a few repetitions just like this. Awesome, very good. And if we wanna make this even harder, you just take an ankle weight, we place it around the patient's ankle like this, we do repetitions with the weight, just like so. We wanna increase the challenge of the movement. Let's have you lay back, and we're gonna go into a Thomas position. Yep, grabbing this leg to your chest. Leg is completely straight, and go ahead and do a few straight leg raises for me. Coming up, and then right back down again. Like I said, we can add some ankle weight to make this a little more challenging. If we wanna make this more of an eccentric exercise, we can actually bend the knee before we come up, Straighten the leg out fully. Keep this straight as you go all the way back down again. Yep, and once we get to the very bottom, bend the knee again, make it easy on the way back up, straighten out. Yep, so a variety of different ways to make this movement harder. And also we can do eccentric focus versus concentric focus. We can also add a bit of an isometric contraction by using a ball. So largely this ball is gonna go between right side knee and the left side hand. Now bring these legs up, squeeze these together, and go ahead and perform a dead bug. Yep, arm reaches, leg reaches and bring everything back together. So not only are we training the hip flexors here, we're doing it isotonically on this left side leg, but also isometrically on the right side leg. So we get both of these. So we all know the importance of technique and the dead bug is no different. So when Kyle here is doing his exercise here, or doing his dead bugs, I'm gonna put my phone here and have him like the video as it comes back. Yep, right back again. Other hands, make sure you reach all the way. Like the video, good. And then other side, let's have you this time subscribe to the channel, good job. I also really like planks for working the hip flexors. These tend to be pretty benign and easy. So if I'm doing a plank, obviously my core is working, but both hip flexors are working at the same time, right? I wanna make this a little bit easier, I'll elevate the plank onto a bench and I'll keep the arms straight. I wanna make this a little bit more challenging, I just go down to the elbows. And if your athlete is tolerating this really well, let's go to the floor in a push-up position first. There you go, so things are getting a little more challenging. And lastly, we'll go into a full plank Right, so you can see each time it gets harder and harder and harder. Let's have you come back up again, Kyle, and let's go into a push-up position on the bench. If I want to try to progress this and make this a little bit harder for the hips, I can perform a little bit of marching. So basically, all I'm doing is picking up one heel towards the ceiling, 
Yep. And then right back down again. So what's happening is that as soon as Kyle lifts one leg, the opposite or stance side hip flexor has to fire asymmetrically. So what we're doing is getting an isometric contraction, left side, right side, left side, right side. And if I wanna make this harder, I can just go closer and closer to the floor. Another way to regress the march is from going from a full plank position, and let's go ahead and bend your knees and go into a bear position. And from here, just picking up one leg at a time, marching, marching, marching. So this just shortens the moment arm, makes it a little bit easier for the hip flexors. So once your athlete is tolerating their own body weight really well, we can start to add a little bit of band resistance. So essentially we have Kyle here, the band is around his foot on both sides, arms are against the wall, he's in a good posture position, so basically think about doing a plank against the wall. From here, drive one knee up towards your chest, keep the body nice and long, and we can either alternate between sides or we can just do one at a time just like so. And just like we make the movement harder in the plank with marching from going from a higher position, so a bench down to the floor, we can do the same exact thing from the wall to a bench and down to the floor. Can you show me a few repetitions now in a full plank position? Yep. And generally speaking, we gotta keep the arms long because if you don't, then there's no space for your knee to drive up. Yep, just like that. So now we're getting a good core demand with a little hip flexor too. All right, another easy exercise you can do with your patients with the band, since we're on this topic, is going to be a forward step in a staggered position. So we have Joe here, he's gonna split his stance, like a really short lunge, and from here he's gonna drive his lead leg forward and then catch up with the backside leg, just do a few steps, right? And then from here, go ahead and work backwards, a big step back with the backside leg, yep, and then catching up. So every time that Joe takes a step forward, he's using his hip flexor. So decent exercise, usually it's not that challenging, probably good towards the beginning stages of rehab. So we tend not to think about it, but when we do core exercises, oftentimes we're training the hip flexors as well. And one of the most basic exercises that really works hip flexors is gonna be a traditional sit-up. They're also pretty easy to perform. I think what's important is that you have something anchored down your patient's feet. You can use big dumbbells, you can use your hands, or you can use a belt around a treatment table, right? Or basically we're gonna have Joe just do a few repetitions here of a traditional sit-up while I hold these dumbbells down so he doesn't fall. All right, so go ahead and perform your sit-up. Yep, all the way up, all the way back down again. Nice and simple. If you want to make this more challenging, go ahead and grab that weight right next to you, Joe, and just pull it and hold it to your chest. Yep, let's do a few reps right here. Yep, up and down. Awesome. We can also get spicy and hold this dumbbell over top of the head. I think these are all great variations to use. One is not necessarily better than the others, but a couple good options for you. I also like to advance the sit-up by adding a decline. Now, this is an incline bench. I wouldn't recommend trying this with your patients, but just to show you what the movement is, essentially we have Joe here laying on his back. We wanna make sure that his legs are hooked into place. From here, go ahead and give me a few reps of your sit-up. Excellent, right back down again. So basically just using body position, gravity to make the movement more challenging. We can also add some weight and hold it to the chest or overhead as well. Another one I like a lot is going to be a reverse sit-up. So essentially it's the opposite of a regular sit-up. Let's have Joe lay down here on incline bench. We're gonna make sure he's holding on to something really stable so the back of the bench works. And essentially from here, he's just trying to get his knees to his elbows. Yep, and when he comes all the way down, straighten out those legs. Yep, yep, touch and then reach those legs all the way out towards the bottom. Yep, just to get a little more hip flexor activity. Yep, good job. Hey there, Brosif McJoseph. I hope you like treats, evidence-based treats that is. It's an evidence-based cheat sheet for diagnosing and treating femoral acetabular impingement. Now, not everybody loves searing hip pain right through the front of the hip as much as I do. And if you wanna make any money as a physical therapist, you're gonna have to help patients with this type of hip pain. Trouble is, gotta stay up to date on this condition to know how to treat it properly. And that's where I come in. With this handy dandy little cheat sheet, we'll catch you up to date on the medical literature on femoral acetabular impingement syndrome in under 10 minutes. We go over a lot of good stuff. Definitions, prevalence, incidence, population, anatomy, risk factors, pathophysiology, mechanism of injury, clinical examination, differential diagnosis, and treatments like physical therapy, injections, and surgery. Best of all, this is a free download. I'll leave a link in the description. Go ahead and download it and get your learn on. And now back to this video. All right, next we have some leg lift variations. The first of it is kind of like a V up variant. So go ahead and grab the uh, bench behind you, legs off the edge, start with the body straight and then bringing everything together. Yep, just like that. If you wanna make things a little bit more challenging, we can just add a little bit of weight, put it between the legs here, squeeze that, and go ahead and drive those knees up towards your chest. Awesome, great work. Next, we progress some harder leg lift variations. I really like performing these on the bench because Joe can reach back and grab the bench behind him and stabilize himself. The first one we'll do with the knees bent it's a shorter lever arm, and it's a little bit easier on the hip flexors. So go ahead and raise your legs up, yep, to 90 or so, and then right back down again. Once this is starting to get a little bit easier for your patients, we can now go legs straight. Straight, and then all the way up. Excellent, good job. And then if they need more, we can easily just take a ball here, 
Go ahead and squeeze this for me, right? Going down and going up, just like so. So an easy way to advance the stress with a leg raise. We can also do leg raise variations on a matador or a dip station. You have access to a captain's chair where you can just put your forearms on this. It's also nice. You can do these hanging as well, although I think that's just a little bit tougher on the shoulder. I have a couple different variations, the first of which will just pop up. And then from here, all I'm doing is raising my knees up towards my chest and right back down again. If I want to make this a little bit more challenging, I can just add a little bit of weight via ball or some ankle weights, driving straight up. If I want to make it even harder from there, it's pretty easy just to go straight with the legs. And if you're a psychopath, you can also add a little bit of weight to the feet, but this is usually pretty challenging for most folks. Next, we have some seated leg lift variations. Now keep in mind, these are very, very easy for most gymnasts because they practice so much. But for the average person, they're actually very challenging because of mobility and because you're not used to working into these positions. So essentially we have Joe here. Let's go legs together. Stabilize yourself with your arms and go ahead and lift up those legs, a couple inches, and right back down again. So if you want to advance this, we just start walking the hands a little bit further up. So let's go back, let's go back to the regular pike position again. Just walk those hands forward a little bit and then try a few lifts gets way harder. Most gymnasts are going to be able to walk really far forward and still lift those legs, right? Another variation that Joe is already trying is to go a little bit wider into straddle position, right? And then go ahead and lift those legs. Yep. And let's try walking your hands forward a little bit along your legs this way and the lift. It just makes it harder and harder. So keep in mind, this is not something that the average person is going to be very good at, but it's something that's great for gymnasts and ballet and folks that get into these pike positions. I also like V-up variations as well. Just keep in mind, I'm not that good at it, but I try my best. Easier variations with your knees bent. So I'm going to start Long this way, knees to chest, right back down. If you want to advance this, I can keep my legs straight. Try to touch, not so good. Let's try again, not so good. A little better, a little better. All right, next we have some cable or band exercises. So right now Joe is attached to a band, to a wall, and then he has something around his ankle that's nice and secure, right? You can also do this a cable stack, which also works really well. So essentially we have Joe standing here, he has a PVC in his left hand, and his right leg is doing the exercise. So go ahead and we'll do some open chain resisted hip flexion. Excellent. Another variation I like is just a step forward, so going through, step all the way through, and then control on the way back, back and forth. Both are really good options. If this is a little bit too challenging, we can bend the knee. So go ahead and show me what you were doing initially and drive that knee forward with the knee bent. Yep, and then right back again. Yep. So shorten some moment arm, a little bit easier on the hip flexors, a couple variations you can try. We can also perform resisted hip flexion in a plank position, so we get a little extra core here. And then again, we have the band attached to Joe's ankle. Go ahead and drive that knee up for me. Excellent. If you have an athlete where their knee is dragging, their toe is dragging, you can actually take the hands and bring it up just a little bit more. A really good way to load the hip flexors. Let's flip, we'll go back onto your back here. Yep, we can do the same exact thing in supine. I like to have the opposite leg bent. Let's go ahead and bend that knee and just make sure that foot is nice and strong into the ground. Then drive that knee straight up. So this is a really good exercise to progressively overload because we can just keep on increasing the weight on the cable stack, getting that hip flexor stronger and stronger and stronger over the course of time. Closed chain resisted hip flexion. Essentially, we just Joe here. We have one foot underneath something stable like a heavy dumbbell. Just make sure you don't use something so light that someone falls backwards. And from here, this side leg is going to be free. He's going to sit back. Just go ahead and show me repetition here, Joe. Yep, as far as he can control, come right back again. So you have someone who's deconditioned or painful, maybe you start with a partial range of motion, and over the course of time, as it gets stronger, I like to go all the way back, get a nice stretch of the hip flexors, while simultaneously strengthening them. Yep, and come right back up again. If you're fearful that someone's gonna fall backwards, we can just take the bench and go from this way to this way. So if basically Joe can't go, or his hip is really hurting, he'll fall right to the bench, so it's very safe, all right? If you have someone who's very strong, we'll make this a little bit more challenging, just take a weight, go ahead and grab this, I'll try to support you a little extra in case you flip off the back. Good, all the way down. Nice stretch at the bottom, all the way back up again. Yep, great exercise used for patients. Next, we have another closed chain exercise. This one is in a plank position. I think I originally sold this from Cal Dietz, so thank you. But I apologize to everyone else I've stolen from that didn't acknowledge, right? So let's go ahead into a push-up position here, Joe. And then you're gonna have one leg onto the bench. And you can't see from this angle, but his other leg is free floating because he's on the edge of the bench. From here, arms stay locked out, reach your hips down towards the floor. And as you come up, drive with your toe into the bench. Yep, bringing those hips back up in the air. Let's go back and forth for repetitions, right? This one's a little more challenging to load, but if you're really focused on driving that toe into the bench, you can feel your hip flexors working. So a good variation to try. Next, we'll chat a little bit about split squats. So the trail leg in a split squat, the hip flexors are actually very active. Before we show you a few split squats, I want to tell you at least how. So if you think about Joe's center of mass, right down his body, when he goes to the bottom of his split squat, and let's take your split squat a little bit longer. 
right? There you go, all the way down again. So his lead side leg, his hip extends to get him out of the hole, but then his trail side hip flexor will actually flex a little bit to get him to the top of the motion. So we have constant tension on the hip flexors during the entire uh, motion here. If you want to try to advance some of the strain on the hip flexors, particularly the rectus femoris, we can just elevate the rear side leg. So go ahead into this rear foot ele elevated split squat here, Joe, right? And then go down to the bottom and then pulse. So in this position, you can just see, we now have hip extension, and we also have knee flexion. So this is going to stretch the rectus femoris even more. When he kicks out of that position, hip flexor active, knee extensors are active, getting a lot of work for those hip flexors, particularly rectus femoris. All right, let's talk a little bit about programming principles when selecting hip flexor exercises. Let's say you have a patient and their primary goal is going to be strength building. Keep in mind that when you're building strength, we want to work a specific joint angle in order to improve strength there. So think about a soccer player. When they're kicking a ball, they have to be strong and range hip extension. So when we choose exercises, we probably want to make sure that we use exercises that are tough in end range hip extension, right? If I'm trying to improve hypertrophy, it's probably important that I work through a full range of motion and put most of the strain on the hip flexors in a stretch position, just because we have research to show that's usually better for hypertrophy. And then if you're dealing with someone who has pain, let's say they have a hip flexor tendinopathy or FAI, we want to choose exercises based on the athlete's tolerance, right? So if they can tolerate a heavy load, great, let's do it. If they can't tolerate a heavy load, we have to start lower and work our way up over the course of time. Last piece to keep in mind is, what is your athlete trying to get back to? Let's go back to the example of a soccer player. So essentially, if it hurts to go into end range hip extension, but they need to kick a ball eventually, we're gonna start with mid-range exercises where it's tolerated, work our way towards end ranges, and then eventually start kicking a soccer ball, starting with easier kicks, then harder kicks over the course of time. All right, so you have an idea of how to prescribe hip exercise, particularly the hip flexors. You probably need some good exercises for the hip extensors or glute muscles. Well, Joe has a video for you. He's left it right in the corner. Go to click on that video and we'll see you there.